Welcome back to our channel guys. Today I'm going to be showing you exactly how to center pin fish for steelhead. Now there's a lot of great methods to use for salmon and steelhead fishing out there, but center pinning is one of my favorites and it's definitely one of the most effective. So whether you're fishing in the Great Lakes, on the West Coast, or anywhere in the world, this will definitely work for you. So we're going to break down everything from setting up the rod and reel to drifting and setting up the rig. It's all coming at you and if you like the video, we'd really appreciate the support if you hit the like button. So let's get started. Coming at us, coming at us, coming at us. Oh, he's gonna jump. He's gonna jump. <laughs> oh, he popped off. Oh, no. He popped off, guys. That was a good fish. Oh, he bobbed me once and it rocketed under. Just good. didn't hang on to him, I guess. I don't know what the heck. So first off guys, I'm gonna start out by talking about choosing a good rod and reel setup. So what I'm running here today is the Raven RPX float rod. This is my favorite center pin rod. It's light, it's fast action with a good backbone. But if you're looking for something a little cheaper that's gonna get you just started in the game, like a Lama Glass Redline or like a Raven IM8 series or something along those lines, it's gonna be perfect just to get you started. So for choosing a good reel here, I like a Raven Matrix XL fully ported. This is a larger diameter center pin reel here because the center pin is a one to one gear ratio. So this larger arbor, I believe this is a five and a half inch arbor, this larger spool and arbor is gonna allow you to pick up line quicker and stay with those fresh, fast fish. And it's also gonna allow you to retrieve your drifts faster and get more drift. So first off guys, we're gonna spool up our line onto our reel here. So I just spooled on about 150 yards of 30 to 40 pound power pro. So you wanna make sure to spool on a braided or Dacron backing to start because that's gonna help extend the life of your mono main line. It's also gonna help extend the life of your reel here as well. So now we're gonna attach our main line onto our braided line here. We're gonna attach these two lines by using the Albright knot. Now today I'm running Trilene Big Game. This is 12 pound test, and this is just a good sheet mono. You don't need anything fancier than this for your main line. Now, if you're running eight pound test leaders, I like to run a 12 pound test main line. If you like to run 10 pound test leaders, I like to run a 14 pound test main line. Keeping that main line to that leader separated by about four pounds is going to help you lose far less floats and gear and I'm going to show you why later in the video. Now if you're just starting with float fishing I'd recommend starting with a high vis float line main line. So a good main line to run is just Trilene Big Game. Now you can get this in lime green and that's a great high vis line to run. Like I said you don't need anything fancier than that. So I got this cool little line winder here. We picked this up on Amazon. Um, not even sure the brand will actually link it in the description. So if you guys want to check this out, you definitely can. But this has been a really helpful tool here. Now, when you're spooling up your line here, you just want to make sure that this just helps with the line twist a little bit. You want to make sure that the line's coming off the spool and onto your reel in the same way. So you can see, you know, it's turning the same way. And that's just going to help with your line twist a little bit here. So I'm going to start off by adding my main line on. So I'm just going to use my index finger to help guide this line onto my spool, guys. So I'm I'm gonna start winding it up. I'm gonna go left, just to right in the center there. Now I'm gonna go do that about three times. So you can see I'm going all the way to the left, I'm going right to the center, then I'm gonna go all the way to the right, and I'm gonna go right to the center, okay? Now I like to do this for the first half of how much I spool on. It seems to help let the line lay on the reel a little smoother. Now once I get about half the line I want on my spool, I'm just gonna go back and forth about at the even speed here. So I'm just, you can see I'm using my finger to kind of guide the line just evenly onto my reel. And I'm gonna show you here how to know how much line to put on your center pin reel here. So you can see, 
there are holes, these holes on the outside of the reel and inside of the reel. You want to spool the line up about three quarters of the way up those holes. And that seems to be a perfect amount of line to put on your reel. Okay, so now we're gonna add our reel onto our rod here. Now with this RPX rod, this has the sliding rings. Now you can get this fixed reel seat as well where it's already fixed, but some people like me like to use these sliding rings because I like to adjust this on personal preference just where I like the reel on the cork of the rod here. Now for me, I like to go down about four inches or so from the top of the cork. That way I have plenty of grip to hold, you know, just above it, and that seems to be a perfect um, counterbalance for my preference here. So I'm going to take just a spool of electrical tape here and I'm going to wrap it about four or five times on this top guide. Now you can see there's a little slot there. That's where the top of the reel is going to go into and you want to make sure that's lined up with your guides. You want it nice and even with the top of your guides. So I'm going to add my reel in there. Now I'm going to take this, usually you want to hold this. I'm going to take this bottom ring and I'm gonna slide this all the way up in there as well. Now I'm gonna slide this reel up, I'm gonna slide that bottom ring up, and I'm gonna make sure that's fixed as tight as possible. If you don't get this completely snug, this is gonna loosen up on you when you're fighting a fish, get a snag. You know, you wanna make sure this is as snug as possible. Now we're gonna take our electrical tape and we're gonna wrap this bottom reel seat here and it's gonna be good to go. <laughs> And one other thing too guys, is this little knob here on these reels is the clicker. So obviously right now this reel is free spooling, but if you want it, the clicker on where it's not gonna free spool like that, you can click this little knob there and that's gonna allow it to not free spool and it's gonna make it easier to line your rod or just for storing your rod, that's gonna make it much nicer. So now that I have my main line spooled through my guides here, something that I really like to do before I start fishing is to stretch out my main line. This is really gonna help out with line twist. With a new spool line, a lot of times it can be a little coiled up. So what I'll typically do is stand in a field, tie my line up to a tree, and stretch that line out to almost its breaking point. You'll feel that mono stretch out, and that's gonna help you out a lot. But I've also done it in the boat like this before. I'll stretch it out, and I'll pull it. You'll feel that mono stretch, and you'll feel it stretch like that and I'll pull it just so it's stretched out and this is really gonna help your line from twisting up so I'd really suggest doing this. So now we're gonna start assembling our rig here, guys. So this line in my left hand is our main line going to our rod. Now I trimmed off about a six foot piece of the same main line here in my right hand, and we're gonna connect these two pieces of line by using a Raven extra small micro barrel swivel. And you wanna make sure to run an extra small micro barrel swivel because that's gonna not sink in the water as you're drifting. But that barrel swivel is gonna really help you with your line twist. Now also, if you're just getting started float fishing, I'd recommend starting with a high-vis main line. Now there's one thing that I don't like is having a high vis line streaking through the water, especially in low clear water. But by using this rig, this will keep your high vis line out of the water. And this is how I like to set up with my clients. So imagine this line here going to our rod. This is our trialing big game, and this is that lime green high vis line. It's gonna be really easy to see as you're drifting through the water. So imagine this is this. Now this is a separate spool. So this is again, trialing big game. This is another spool of just clear or light green. So we're gonna connect these two here. Now I'm gonna take my main line. Now I'm more of an experienced, this is my personal setup here, so I'm more of an experienced fisherman, and I go off by the feel of the line, so I don't run that high-vis line. But like I said, it'll really help you if you're just getting started. So I'm just gonna use the typical clinch knot here. You don't need to run anything fancier than that. So here, this is our six foot piece of line. Now imagine this, you know, like I said, this is your high vis with the swivel already tied, and this is your clear line here. So you have two different spools, but you're running this clear line in the water. That way that high vis isn't in the water. But like I said, even though I'm not running high vis, I still like to run that barrel swivel up there just because that's gonna really help me with my line twist. Okay, so I'm just gonna use the clinch knot again. I'm gonna put that on. Now you might say, well, what happens if you want to run deeper in a hole? Honestly, I just slide the bobber right up past the swivel. It's a little tricky. Sometimes you have to remove the bobber from the tubing. Sometimes you'll rip the tubing, but most of the time I just rip it. If I want to go a little bit deeper than what this piece is in a hole, I'll just slide that bobber right above that swivel and it works fine. So now we're gonna add our float onto our line here. So this is that six foot piece I trimmed. We have our swivel on, it's connected to our main line. Now I'm gonna add on two pieces of tubing here. Okay, now this is, I believe this is Raven 1 16th inch tubing. Raven makes some good tubing here. This is good durable soft tubing. Okay, I got one piece on. Now I'm gonna run a little bit longer of a piece on my bottom end. Okay, I'm gonna slide that up. 
Now I got a Raven. I'm fishing a big river system today. This float's seeing a lot of a lot of action. This is a Raven fast and deep, 20 gram float. I like to run this 20 gram on bigger river systems like the Muskegon, Grand, Manistee. You know, those are some big ones we have here in Michigan. Um, if I'm fishing a smaller system though, I like to run maybe an eight gram fast and deep float or an 11. And you just want to adjust your weight accordingly. You know, you won't be able to run as much weight with a smaller float, so. You just want just enough weight so that bobber's floating at right about that white line in the water. So we have our float on our line here. Now we're going to connect one more micro barrel swivel below our float here. So now we have our barrel swivel below our float here. We're going to add on our leader now. So what I'm running today is Seaguar Red Label. Okay, this is Seaguar Red Label. And I'm going to run just about, I don't know, a two foot piece of Red Label here. So I'm going to trim that. And I'm gonna add this to my barrel swivel. Okay, so we're gonna make sure that's wetting. Always wet your knots, tighten them down. Now we're gonna add our bead onto our leader line here. Now this is a Great Lakes Tangerine. Great Lakes 10 millimeter Tangerine. That's been a really good bead for us lately. Okay, now this is a size four Gamagatsu glow, glow bug yarn hook. Okay, I'm gonna take my bead peg. This is another, this is a Great Lakes Steel Company bead peg. I'm gonna slide it through the hole of the line. I like to use a rubber peg. I've used toothpicks before, but sometimes toothpicks will fray your line, so these rubber pegs are really nice. I'll snug that peg up in there just so it's snug. And I'll trim both ends. Okay, now I'm gonna space my bead out from my hook three fingers. So I'm gonna space it out three fingers from my bead to my hook. If you put this hard bead right on top of your hook, you will never get those fish hooked. You will roll many fish. I remember when I first started fishing beads, that's what I would do is I'd put it too close to my hook, I'd lose a lot of fish like that. But you don't want to space it out too far, but three fingers length away from your hook, perfect medium. So now we're going to add our split shot to our line here. Now you can see I have a variety of different sizes here. So I'm going to start off by putting these three bigger shot right here below my float. And I'm going to space these out about six inches, six, eight inches all the way from my float down to about two feet from my bead. Now if I'm fishing a spawn bag, I'll put these shot down to about 10 inches from my spawn bag because the spawn bag floats up a little more. But a hard bead's going to sink a little more, so I like to run my shot a little bit farther away from my bead. So a good little trick too guys is with these split shot here, I buy bulk of my split shot and I put them all together in a coffee can and just th throw a little dirt in that coffee can and roll them around. And that with that little bit of dirt it weathers those sinkers that way they get that little bit of dull color to them and they're not really shining going through the water it's a little more stealthy stealthy so that's a good little trick there so here's my bead i'm just going to add one little split shot my smallest split shot onto my leader here so this is i don't know probably a little longer than two feet maybe 30 inches um so i'm going to put on one little split shot about six inches down from my leader now i believe this is a size i want to say a size 10 bb shot this is a, just a BB, this is the size of this. So I'm gonna crimp this one down, just nice and snug. You don't wanna crimp it too tight or else it might fray your line, but just nice and snug. Now, like I said, there's about, I don't know, two foot leader maybe from that last split shot to my bead, because these hard beads will sink faster than a spawn bag will. So now, at my swivel here, I'm gonna take my next size shot up. I believe this is a size seven or a B. I could be wrong about the exact sizes on this, but you don't have to get too technical with this, guys. Anywhere in this general range is gonna work just fine for you. So, I got that shot on there. About six inches up from that, I'm gonna take my next shot. Now, I believe this is a size five. Now, I'm gonna crimp that one on. I'm gonna go up again. I'm gonna crimp another one on. I'm gonna go all the way up, and I'm gonna set my float for about, I don't know, eight feet, because that's about how deep we're running. So I'm going to go all the way up to my float here and just keep crimping them on. Now this is going to be a shot line. Now this shot line will help keep your bait vertical through those holes and ride nice and smooth through those holes and it'll help your bait get down to where those fish are at. Now a good way to tell that you're near bottom is if your float's constantly going down. So when you're setting deeper, when you're fishing a hole and you're setting deeper trying to find the bottom, you'll know when you found it. When your float starts dragging, it'll start leaning on its side, it'll start waddling back and forth, um, or it'll start going down constantly. Then when that happens, just shallow it up about six inches at a time until that bobber's nice and smooth, riding vertical through the hole, and then you know you're right perfectly in the strike zone in that hole you're fishing. 
So now that we're set up, I'm gonna show you guys how to cast. So this is the best way to learn as a beginner to cast. Now this is just a basic side cast. Now if you're, like I said, if you're just getting started, this cast is gonna work great for you. You know some people say it does cause some more line twist, and it does, but with that swivel above your bobber, that'll really help compensate for that line twist with this cast. So to get started here, I have my bobber about three feet off the tip of my rod. You wanna make sure your bobber's not too close to the tip of your rod because this is gonna help you cast. Now when you're casting, you're more or less swinging your whole shot pad and your float and your shot pattern out to to the point where you want to land now if you try to pitch this like say a lure um, it's gonna tangle up your shot line and it's not gonna fly through the air nicely but if you swing this nice and smooth this is gonna lay that shot line out perfectly in the hole and it's gonna make sure your lines fishing and not getting tangled or knotted okay guys so the form you're gonna want here is to stay shoulder length apart when you're casting now you're gonna need both hands for casting this here so I'm gonna grab the line with my left hand here, but once I grab this line, I'm gonna make an upside down L with this hand. So I'm gonna stay shoulders length apart, and I'm gonna make an upside down L with my left hand, and I'm gonna turn it directly off my reel here. So you can see, my hand is directly off my reel. Now the line's gonna go right through this groove in between my index finger and my thumb, and I'm gonna keep it straight off my reel. So, I'm gonna grab this line, I'm gonna pinch the line with, say, my middle finger on this reel here. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about how to hold this reel too in just a second here. So I got this line pinched and I got this left hand straight off my reel. So as I cast this, as my body rotates through my cast, I'm gonna keep this hand straight off my reel the entire time. If you drop this hand, if you move this hand down like this or move it up or move it out, you know, the line's not gonna continue to fly off your reel. So keep that upside down L, straight off the reel, all the way through your cast. And you can see that line, it just flew right out there. Now that line came off smooth and you wanna keep your hand straight off your reel all the way till when your bait hits the water there. Now once that bait hits the water, you just slowly drop your hand off the reel. Now your reel's gonna start spinning. Now let me show you the form of how to hold this reel and how to position in your right hand as you fish and as you cast. So when you're holding this reel here, guys, you wanna take your pinky to your middle finger, these bottom three fingers, and feather it on the outside of the rim of the spool here. So this side does not move, and this side does move. So as you're drifting, and as you're fighting a fish, these bottom three fingers are gonna feather this reel, and that's gonna allow you to slow your drift down, and it's also gonna allow you to, to really play that fish out. So I'm gonna pinch this line with my middle finger here, Okay, make my upside down L. Now when you go to cast guys, think of your middle finger here. Think of that as your index finger on a spinning rod. So when you go to cast a spinning reel, you know how you pinch the line with your index finger when you're casting a spinning reel and you let it go about halfway through your swing? Think of that like your you know, index finger on a spinning rod. So as I go to cast this, as I get halfway through my swing out to cast, I'm gonna let this line go off my middle finger and I'm gonna keep this left hand straight off my reel and that line's gonna fly right out to the point you want here. So I'm gonna pinch that line. I got my left hand straight off my reel, about shoulders length apart. And now I'm gonna cast this. The line's flying through my left hand. I still got my left hand out. I'm gonna slowly drop that left hand and now I'm fishing here, okay? So now, my float's just starting to go. I like to keep my rod at a little bit of an up angle, about a 45 degree angle at first. And my reel's just starting to spin here. So, my reel's just starting to spin. I got my bottom three fingers just feathering that outside rim that's spinning. I got it just feathering. Now I'm gonna slow it down or I'm gonna allow it to spin faster depending on the drift, you know, if I need my float to float a little smoother, I'm gonna let that spool spin a little faster. But if I need to slow it down a little bit, like right now, I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. Now there's one more thing I wanna mention here, guys, as far as casting. When I go to cast, you wanna keep your rod up at a high angle. You wanna make sure your bait and your bobber's all out of the water. If you try to do this with your rod low, and you say your split shot and your bait's all under the water and you try to cast, it's not gonna end up well. It's gonna drag the water and it's gonna spool up and it's just not gonna end up well. And like I said, when you cast, you wanna more or less swing this line because you have all that split shot staggered from your float down to your hook. So you wanna swing this setup. You don't wanna pitch it, you wanna swing it. So you keep that left hand straight off your reel and I'm just gonna swing that line out there. 
It does not take a lot of effort to do this. You know, just that little smooth swing. I just let that rod swing and I let that all that split shot and the weight of the split shot and the float just carry right out there. And now when you go to set the hook, guys, it's really important that you clamp with these bottom three finger, fingers on that reel so you get a good stick, you know? You want to make sure to really clamp down on that and it can get tricky, especially when you're fishing in rain because that spool gets a little slippery. So just really want to practice and make sure when you go to set that hook that you really clamp down on that reel or else your knuckles are going to get busted. Now as my bobber starts to drift down and your line starts to get on the water, sometimes what will happen is, is your line will develop a big bowl. So when that happens and your line just starts developing that bowl, guys, just clamp your reel, stop your reel for just a second and do a big high hat circle to your left and you're gonna see that line pick up off the water now by doing that that's gonna straighten it up to your bobber so now that we broke down the technique and rigging we're gonna put them to use and go see if we can find a couple of fish in this next segment here fish too we've been grinding out here we've been putting in our work we lost one earlier this morning it was actually on the first cast and that was it so that seems to be the omen of steelhead and salmon fishing if you hook one on your first cast that usually means it's gonna be a struggle bus of a day but uh we've been putting in our work guys we've been grinding through these holes fishing everything so guys, when you're fighting fish on these center pins here, you're the drag. So it's really important to just make sure you have good control on your reel. So like I said, I like to have my bottom three fingers on here. And you can see I have my rod right here. I just got a nice bend in my rod, you know. I'm not putting too much on them. I just got a nice bend in the rod, you know, I'm putting nice steady pressure. When that fish is starting to swim at me and that pressure is letting up, that's when I'm going to pull back on the rod and I'm going to reel down and I'm going to try to gain on them. But anytime that fish is head shaking and running, you just want to let them, let them go. Just let them run, let them tire out. I see a lot of fish get lost with these center pins here. When they go on a run, guys will just clamp down on them and it'll snap them off a lot of times. So anytime that fish is going on a run, you just want to make sure to just let that reel slip. Keep a good bend in the rod, but let that reel slip. Let the rod do the work. You just want to have smooth actions. Just be real smooth with everything. I got my rod low like this. The fish is just down below the boat here. Okay, I can feel the pressure letting up. And I'm just going with the flow. You know, when he's pulling hard, I'm just letting him pull hard. I'm letting him fight out. And like right now, I'm pulling back on him. He's giving me some. So he gave me a little bit there. So see that guys, he's coming at me. So he's cooperating with me. So I'm just gonna pull back while he's letting me. So I'm gonna pull back. I'm gonna pull back, I'm gonna get this net ready here. Now when you're in a boat like this, what I like to do is I'll keep my rod low and I'll keep pulling low and upstream until that fish is up above us. So once that fish is up above us, then I'll lift straight up and he'll flop back to me. Let me show you that here. So I'm pulling upstream. I'm pulling low and upstream. Now watch this guys, I'm going to raise up like this, I'm going to get her on the surface, and I'm going to flop her right back in the middle. You know, that way, that way guys, when you keep your rod low like that, you're, you know, you're tricking that fish, you're swimming upstream, then you're using the current to your advantage. Instead of trying to pull that fish to you against the current, you're tricking that fish, getting her upstream, then you're lifting her to the top and you're work, letting that current work with you. So this is just a good solid adult steelhead here guys. Very typical fish for us here in the Great Lakes. About an eight pound hen. You can see she's a nice wild fish with her adipose fin up here. And uh, yeah, just a nice, nice good solid cromer. Real fresh fish right out of the lake. So we're gonna get her going back, but this is just a great representation of what we have here in the Great Lakes. There she goes guys back down into the hole 
Well, that was a successful release, guys. We had to work pretty hard for that fish, but we finally got one in the boat. But that's the name of the game with steelhead fishing like this. So we hope you enjoyed the video and learned a thing or two. If you're new to our channel, feel free to subscribe. We post bi-weekly uploads and we'd love to have you with us. So we'll see you guys back here in a couple weeks in our next video.